The final paradigm I want to discuss with you this week is a compromise between the minimal effects and powerful media perspectives. Combining elements of both models, the negotiated media effect model states that media and communication in general, not only mass, the focus is broader than that, have a potential for great power. Effects can be short term, direct, immediate, after one shot exposure, etc. However, more often, strong and enduring effects are based on long term, repeated exposure, where the content reinforces rather than changes the audience's beliefs. This perspective combines the insight of political and economical scholars with those of psychologists, sociologists, and even cultural anthropologists, looks at human development and sees persuasion as something continuous, something that is not to be avoided because we need it to function. It can't be avoided without losing that which connects us with each other. Many studies with children were now done to find out more about the role of communication during crucial development phases and also many societal problems like crime, prejudice, aggressive and antisocial behavior were now linked to communication, either as a cause or as a possible solution, and often both. Tries to merge qualitative and quantitative methods, for instance by backing qualitative statements with quantitative data, thereby aiming to measure the subjective. Looks at all kinds of effects, Agenda setting, for instance, is a theory that proposes that the media don't tell us what to think, but what to think about. The media agenda therefore influences the public agenda. If the marriage of some celebrity is much discussed in the news, it will probably feature higher on the public perception as well. The media tell us which items are important and where important things happen and why. The amount of attention given to environmental pollution by the media, for instance, can cause a higher percentage of people thinking about this subject and a higher percentage of people evaluating environmental pollution as a serious and important problem. Frames define problems, shape possible solutions and basically help a person deconstruct a message in a particular way. For instance, when we're talking about pollution of the environment, we can have many different angles to approach this topic. We can talk about the big polluters in the world, or what you as a consumer can do, or we can go down into the basic facts and figures of uh, global warming. These are all different frames that will lead to a different deconstruction of the message. In these photos, the same news event, the tearing down of Saddam Hussein's statue, is depicted. The frame is however quite different, thereby probably changing how we deconstruct the message. We can see that these types of theories no longer focus on the intention of the sender, but rather on message construction and deconstruction. So no longer the linear effect-oriented approach, but a focus on the construction and reception of the message, on processing and signification. We're going to continue with that topic next week. I hope to see you then.